Hey, welcome back to the Quilted Gardener. I finally found the remote, so I'm not doing that to you. Today's Sunday the 10th. Um, God, my mouth is so dry. My lips are sticking to my teeth. Um, cloudy day, no snow. It was supposed to snow, but it didn't. Um, so it is 63 degrees in the, in the warehouse, in the greenhouse. Um, so, and that's just with the one heater on. This one's turned off because it gets very hot. So, double checking on lavender today. These are still growing. Um, I saw three or four in the um, paper towel experiment thing, but I'm just gonna tear the paper towel apart and put that into these, j these, um, just because I think it's gonna be easier and better results. Um, some of my lettuce is bouncing back from being transplanted, not all of it. So um, the stuff that isn't is gonna become chicken food. So today, um, I had said in my last video that I was going to show you a couple of books I have. Um, first off, this is one of three of my um, seed binders. I call them seed Bibles. Oops, that's upside down. I don't want to dump that out. Um, so, and there, you know, like this one's all flowers, yeah. Um, and then I have one for herbs and greens, and then one for, you know, in-ground stuff, my beans, my tomatoes, that kind of stuff. But I just printed off a bunch of sheets, and it just says on there, um, you know, how long before, you know, to start it before you plant it outside, and then the date planted, germination time, and how many were planted and what the results were. Um, some of them have the actual photo of what the seeds are. Others don't because, like I said, I have three of these. I think it's like 260 different varieties of seeds now. Um, so my thing was to get them in. Um, and this is cabbage, you know, Chinese cabbage. Um, so I know what that looks like. But as I start them, I pop the seed packet off and it goes back into, um, I didn't bring them out, but I have these metal uh, artillery holders that you know you can like throw them in the lake, but they won't sink and they won't leak. Uh, my brother-in-law gave them to me. Um, they're antique. So um, seeds get stored in those in the off season so they don't get too warm, they don't get wet, they don't get moldy, that kind of stuff. And they just go downstairs into my studio in the back corner because it's like 65 degrees in there full time. Um, it never really changes. So I'll put them on the floor, um, which will help keep the coldness down because I obviously don't have that much room in my refrigerator. So um, this was just a way for me to keep stuff organized and from falling out. Um, I mean, if the seed packet spills, it's gonna go right down into that plastic leaf leave what do you call it page protector so um, today I got in hyssop and mint and there were two specific reasons that I bought hyssop and mint um, insect control that's natural um, this is the first book that I was talking about the new seed starter handbook um, I don't even really know how many pages it is with the index, it's 450. Um, and it's really nice because any kind of question that you have um, for seed starting pest control, soil issues, etc., you can find it in this book. So basically, it's your Bible for a new gardener and for those of us who've been gardening for a long time. Um, so like, hiss up. Uh, it controls two of the bugs that I have a lot of issues with. Uh, let's see. You know, some people say you can go out and pick them off. Uh, I have a white fly infestation. I could be sitting there for days trying to pick them off or using some tape 
um, to get rid of it. And it's just not going to work. Um, it's back here in the gray section. The gray is like your... Um, when you're looking for something specific. Because there's a chart in here that it just kind of, uh, it's, oh, the gray part is the encyclopedia of plants to grow from seed. Um, but it also gives you other information about the plant. Um, seed viability, you know, how long they're good for, um, that so that you can keep them, you know, to, how to test germination, um, to check to see if your seeds are any good before you, you know, plant them outside, how to store your seeds, you're drying your seeds when you collect them yourself. Um, and it tells you what seeds you should harvest and how to harvest them. Um, maxify, maxim, maximizing um, use of a greenhouse, hoop house, cold frame, etc. is in here. Um, and I meant to mark that section because I knew I was coming out to do it. Um, and now, someone had asked me about controlling slugs. Um, the best thing I have found that everybody uses um, is beer in a, in a low um, container to keep it in because they get in there and they drown. But the beer with the yeast and the salt and everything that's in it will dehydrate them. You just have to empty it every day. Um, Otherwise, you have a really nasty mess. Um, you know, it tells you which ones to plant together, like, you know, what flowers to go with, what vegetables to help protect them. Um, so this is a really good book. I paid, I got it on Amazon, so I know I didn't pay 20 bucks for it. I think I paid 15. Um, and it was sent by Prime. So then, one of the other books I use a lot is Greenhouse Gardening for Beginners by Jason Johns. Um, really, it is the basics of greenhousing um, and what's your best choice for the area that you live in, the type of greenhouse that you would want. So this is a really good choice. Got it on Amazon also. This one's brand new. Um, this one is Carrots Love Tomatoes, and it's Companion Planting for Successful, successful Gardening by Louise Riot. Um, I think I paid nine for this one on Amazon, but it really it tells you what to plant together and what not to plant together. Um, there were a few things that I found in here that really surprised me that I thought they went together, but they don't. Um, one thing that I found crazy cool was if you plant carrots with garlic, they don't get um, damaged by insects. So, um, and it gives you, you know, how to dry leaves and things like that. Um, let's see how. Okay, the hyssop is you plant it near cabbage and it gets the lures the cabbage butterfly away. Um, bees are very fond of it. And other insects find the plant repellent. Radishes will not do well if hyssop is nearby. Um, it says it smells like civet, which I don't know what that is. Um, I guess it says it's close to savory. Uh, a compress of hyssop also helps remove black and blue spots from bruises. So, um, and then the mint I got because that does help. I didn't have any mint seeds, believe it or not. That helps with keeping away aphids. There's so many things out there to keep aphids away. Um, the other thing that came in is Facilia, um, Lacy Fiddleneck. And it is... It keeps away aphids, nymphs, nymph, nematodes, um, nymphs. So I'll be doing more 
information on things like this as I go along, as I'm starting them. Um, a lot of these will be getting started this coming week, um, just for the fact that I want good, healthy plants to go out right in the beginning of planting season. And then the next book I do reference a lot, and this one I got local, um, is Grow All You Can Eat in Three Square Feet. If you have a small area to garden in, you're just going to start gardening, you want to do patio gardening, this is the book for you. Um, I paid 20 bucks for it a few years ago. Um, oddly enough, it doesn't have the name of an author on it. Um, it's regular price is $22.95. It's front printed in Canada, but it does have nice color photos in it um, with a lot of information and it tells you what to plant next to each other. You know, so you have a low garden and a high garden. Um, so you're using the amount of space that you have very efficiently. Um, watering chips, what you should plant together, what you shouldn't plant together. Um, you know, the depth of what your planter should be, the type of dirt you should use, all in that book right there. Again, that one's Grow All You Can Eat in Three Square Feet. It is available on Amazon. I don't know how much because I already have it. And then the Totten Home Containers with Style. This is just, you know, kind of a home book. Um, I don't even know where I got this, actually. I've had it for quite a while. But it's just different ways to use containers. You don't have to use, you know, store-bought containers. You can go out and, you know, find old milk cartons or wooden boxes or um, there's even the use of tires in here. So it gives you a lot of information on, you know, what you should plant in it, what you shouldn't plant in it, how to, you know, if you have to treat it to stop it from um, leaching water, etc. It tells you how to do that. It gives you a lot of ideas on how to... Um, Use things at home, build things at home yourself. You know, like trellises are expensive, and you can actually build one for like under 20 bucks, a nice wooden one. Um, I fortunately had a lot of um, cattle panels given to me, so that's what we'll be using. But there's like even stuff in here um, using an old ladder on your deck. So, um, yeah, it's a good book too. So that's my little library of things that I reference, um, especially even more so now that we're expanding the garden. Um, so that'll help a lot. And then having everything, you know, seed-wise organized so that I know when I started it what kind of result I had. And then um, as the season goes on, I'll still keep recording in there so that I know if I want to plant it again. If it tasted good, if it wasn't, if it produced well or it didn't. Um, that kind of thing. So, there's the updates on the books. Um, and that's about it for this video. This one's going to stop, um, and then I'm going on to the next one. So, these will probably post one right after the other, but over the next couple of days. So, until next time, see you then.